but rather an abundance of positive charge. And I can tell that because the When people talk about the universe and its hierarchy, they place humans on the top of the hierarchical pyramid. But is this placement actually plausible? Some may point out on the universal scale, we are insignificant, but that is not always the case. Concerning the complexity of our chemistry, we are the most complex thing we know about. And if we want to point out the most complex entity in us, it will be our nervous system, without competition. The complexity of our nervous system and its processing is why it's plausible to place us on the top of the pyramid, and its study is one of the greatest projects humanity has initiated not so long ago. A field that is concerned by the study of these systems is known as neuroscience, and it focuses on the structure of the nervous system and how it functions in a manner that makes us human. Concerning the structure of this complex machinery, it's mainly divided into central nervous system which constitutes the brain and the spinal cord and the rest of the system is classified as peripheral nervous system. Frankly speaking, neuroscience has many sub-branches including cognitive neuroscience, behavioral neuroscience, cellular neuroscience, evolutionary neuroscience, computational neuroscience, and the list goes on endlessly. Seriously, every single one of them deserves a video on its own but we will try to focus on a broader view of the field for this one. So firstly, let's talk about the building blocks of the nervous system, the neurons. They are interconnected cells that are located in each and every part in our bodies. You know what is interesting about it? It is the fact that they live with you all your life because of the fact that they are not capable of doing cell division. So if you know what I mean, neurons keep their promises on forever. But what do neurons actually do? Neurons generate electrical signals, we can go fancy and name them action potentials that are transmitted over long distances to make you feel something. Think of a particular thought, or even act in response to danger or any other stimulation. So, neurons receive information, pass this information consequently and communicate these signals to target cells of other body organs. According to the functions of neurons, they are classified into sensory neurons, motor neurons and interneurons. Did you know that some of these interneurons are metabolically active just as your heart cells? It's okay, we didn't know that either till we've done our research. If you ask us, they may be the most bizarre type of cells known to biology for their sophisticated electrical and biochemical functions. In fact, they were so bizarre that scientists at first didn't believe that a structure like the brain was made out of cells at all. No wonder why there were so many myths concerning the system. Anyways, jumping up to when you forgot that your phone is in your back pocket and you just sat down and suddenly there's a sound of crack and you say shamelessly, Oh man, I hope this is my spine. Inside the bones of that precious thing you just wish you broke is the spinal cord. But what does it even do? Well, it is essentially important for receiving information from your brain to your body and vice versa to generate other reflexes that help you in your daily life movements. We can assure you that there is nothing more valuable than a healthy spinal cord. It does not regenerate, you know. Moving to other components of the central nervous system and the structure that makes us who we are today, the brain is the hungry bunny in our bodies, for it actually consumes 20% of our blood sugar. But hey, why? Partly because the brain regulates everything in your body. Your memory, temperature, breathing, emotions, touch, vision, hunger, movement, etc. Don't you think we should feed that guy? Speaking of the memory, have you ever wondered how our brains actually save memories and recall it? Memory is saved in many parts of the brain, depending on their use. Spatial memories which are used for navigation, the ones responsible for you knowing the way home, are saved in a region of the brain known as the hippocampus. When a spatial memory is created, information flows from the cortex, the richest part of the brain with nerve cells, to the hippocampus and vice versa, when it is retrieved. But still, that doesn't answer the question of how memories are created, and this brings us to synapses. A synapse is a small gap between neurons, responsible for their communication. 
The strength of a synapse is an essential factor for the efficiency of the communication. Simply speaking, altering the strengths is what creates memories. This is why you often hear people saying that learning changes the structure of the brain, and that is not a lie. Taxis and Uber drivers actually have larger hippocampuses than average persons because of their OP knowledge of navigation. But have you ever felt like a certain piece of information just vanished or you can just reach it out? This inability to recall a memory is called forgetting. Why do we forget? It is because a memory trace is created every time a new memory is formed. And as the DK theory suggests, that over time these memory traces begin to fade away and disappear. In other words, if the information is not retrieved and rehearsed, it will eventually be lost. Another possible theory for forgetting, known as interference theory, suggests that similar memories compete and interfere with already stored memories, in a scheme similar to that of natural selection. Interestingly, some other neuroscientists claim that forgetting is healthy, at least in some cases, since we tend to let go of memories to allow others to be saved. Moving on from memory, you know the situation when you just can't shut your brain up? Probably when you're having an exam that you have been preparing for since forever. Captivatingly, did you know that your brain is always active even while you're asleep? It just varies in the frequency of its brain waves that are related to the brain activity. Gradual reduction of the brain activity occurs while we are sleeping, and the more it is reduced, the deeper you sleep and the harder you are to be awakened. So accordingly, have you ever wondered why a person can walk, eat, or talk while sleeping? It is just the fact that sleeping consists of stages, a rapid eye movement stage, and three stages of non-rapid eye movement, where in the rapid eye movement stage, we are capable of dreaming, so if the motor is operating and fails to enter paralysis, we tend to act like what we are dreaming, and hence, the sleepwalking phenomenon. Did you know that many serial killers were set free just because of these phenomena? So after all this, do you still doubt your place at the top of the hierarchical pyramid? We may be insignificant at the universal scale, but we had a 1 in quadrillion chance of existing at this level of complexity, and yet, here we are. Thank you for watching. We hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have another field of study that you want us to discuss in a future video, feel free to leave it down in the comment section below. We tried our best to give you a brief general view on the field, without going deep in its subfields. But if you're interested, as always, there will be further readings below our sources in the description. For the ones who want to dive deeper in the field, don't forget to like and subscribe and share it with your friends and family if you learned something new.